different types of credit arrangements are an important part of financial system of any country. At some point of time, almost all of us feel the need of borrowing some money for our needs. It may be to buy a house, a car or an electronic gadget. People take loans from the banks to set up a new business or for the marriage and education of the children also. We may borrow money from our relatives or friends informally or from the banks in a formal way. Today we will learn more about the credit system. People deposit their hard-earned money in the banks to keep it safe and also to earn interest. People also have the provision to withdraw the money as and when they require. Since the deposits in the bank accounts can be withdrawn on demand, these deposits are called demand deposits. We can directly settle payments by writing checks without the use of cash. This way, we do not need to carry the money in our hands to make a payment. These days, we can even transfer money from one account to another by internet. Since demand deposits are accepted widely as a means of payment along with currency, they constitute money in the modern economy. Have you ever thought, what do the banks get in turn for keeping the money safe? From where do the banks pay interest to all those who deposit their money with them? The entire banking system in India is supervised by Reserve Bank of India. Now let us understand the functioning of banks in detail. We already told you that bank accepts deposits from the public. Banks use major portion of these deposits to extend loans to those who need. Banks charge an interest from all the borrowers on the borrowed amount. The difference between what is charged as interest from the borrowers and what is paid to the depositors is the primary source of income of banks. Banks keep only a small portion of people's deposits as cash with themselves. Banks in India these days hold about 15% of their deposits as cash to pay up the depositors who might come to withdraw money. Just imagine if all the depositors went to the bank to withdraw their money at the same day, same time, what would happen? Obviously, the bank would not be able to pay up. If you think that borrowing money is an easy job, then you are mistaken. You have to pay it back also with interest. Let us study the example of Alisha and Swapna from your book to understand various scenarios linked with borrowing money from the banks. Alisha, a shoe merchant, took loan from bank to procure the raw material and meet the production needs. He successfully completed an order of making 3,000 pairs of shoes in time and repaid the loan with interest. If he continues getting orders, his income will increase, his profits will become his capital and he will no longer need to borrow money from the bank. But there was a risk in this. Just imagine what would have happened if he was not able to complete the order in time. Swapna, a small time farmer, also took a loan from the bank to meet the expenses of cultivation. She hoped to have a good harvest and repay the loan. But unfortunately, this did not happen. The crop was a failure because of unfavorable climate and pest attack. She was caught in debt and had to sell a portion of her land to repay the debt. In one situation, the credit system helps a person to flourish financially, while in the second case, the borrower was pushed into a debt trap.
just because there is always a risk that the borrower may or may not be able to repay the money, the money lenders or the banks do not offer loans to us just like that. There are certain terms and conditions which have to be met. They ask for collateral as security against the loans. A collateral is an asset that the borrower owns like a house, vehicle or livestock. If a borrower fails to repay the loan, the lender has the right to sell the collateral and collect his money. Bank loans require proper documents as well as collateral. Poor people do not generally have any collateral. That is why they cannot take loan from the banks. They have to depend on local money lenders who may cheat them by charging the interest as per their own sweet will. While taking a loan, every borrower looks for easy terms of credit. This means low interest rate, easy conditions for repayment, less collateral and documentation requirements. Different types of people borrow money for different purposes at different terms and conditions. The sources of credit may be formal or informal as we have discussed earlier also. Rich people borrow money from the formal sources of credit like banks and while the poor people have to depend on the informal sources like friends, relatives and local money lenders to borrow money. Let us compare the informal and formal sources of credit in detail. Formal sources of credit 1. The main sources are banks and cooperatives. They follow rules and regulations framed by the Reserve Bank of India and thus cannot possibly cheat the borrowers. 1. The main sources are local money lenders and traders. They do not follow any rules and regulations. 2. If the borrowers fail to repay the debt, they do not adopt dishonest means of claiming their money back. 2. They may adopt unfair means to claim their money. 3. They charge lesser interest on loans. 3. They charge interest as per their will from the borrowers. 4. They require a lot of documentation to be done and collateral. It is thus not easy to obtain loans from such sources. Formal credit is actually only meant for rich and educated people. 4. They do not need much documentation, however, they may ask for collateral. Informal credit is generally given to poor and uneducated people. Well, so you saw that the poor section of our society is at the losing end as far as credit system is concerned. So, how can we help them? Now, the government is taking steps to make it easier for the poor people also to obtain loans from the formal sources. NABAD, which is an acronym for National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development, is an organization that gives formal credit to the farmers. RBI is also taking steps to make the formal loans accessible to the rural people also by opening branches in the rural areas. The government has also started providing unique identification number to every citizen of India. All those who get themselves enrolled are given an Aadhaar card. Those who will have this card will be able to open their bank accounts and avail all the services provided by the banks very easily. These days people can open an account and there is no compulsion to keep any minimum account in their account. This is known as a no-frills account. Self-help groups or SHGs 